Good morning, folks. We've got news in a number of directions today, but we're starting with the sun. Following the M-class solar flare we reported yesterday, we've got more activity today. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star. Eruption is coming on the northern active region. It was a traditional field lift and current sheet collapse, releasing the outer plasma. It was a flurry of C-class events this morning, much less powerful than what we saw in yesterday's show, but this one was on the Earth-facing half of the sun. The eruption is clearly coronal plasma only, and Stereo A got the eruption as well on top there. Stereo A images have Earth off to the right. Venus can be seen on the stereo coronagraphs right now as well. Clearly a moderately wide eruption spanning transequatorial heliographic latitudes. But SOHO does indeed show the Balkan speediest part of the ejecta heading out and away from the Earth. Small component may give us a glancing blow, and while it won't be scary, it should be noticeable if it happens with solar wind dropping in density and expected to drop in plasma speed as well. Two large earthquakes yesterday. Luckily, both were blood echoes and not felt much at the surface. Both of these hit our app's red alert stars on the earthquake risk map, by the way. And speaking of earthquakes, twin studies up next with the first checking the risk to Cologne, Germany for their centennial and millennial events. While the former, a 5.5, shouldn't be too devastating, the latter, a 6.5, is likely to cause considerable infrastructure damage. The twin study comes in the same format for Vancouver, but checks the magnitude 8 to 9 event they expect there someday. They find the guidelines are too lax, building codes unable to protect many structures including some of the oldest and the biggest. They give a 14% chance of it happening in the next 50 years. Last one on the ground here as we come to a multi-year drought, definitively identified as being exacerbated by the global economic hit of the lockdowns putting millions of people into extreme poverty and extreme risk of starvation. Many sympathies to those most vulnerable or already affected by the virus, but at less risk than the seasonal flu every four to five years, according to the CDC numbers, you can't kill the world economy over it and create extreme poverty. It is the number one indicator of early death on this planet. I was super excited about this article at first until I found out it was about the chemical signatures on Phobos and not the monolith. That would have been way cooler. Quick note on the solar cycles next. Not the greatest of English translations, but it's workable in confirming mathematically a number of the key cycles we've discussed for a while, and which are set to converge later this century. Harvard's Amir and Avi are up next, quite the proliferative publishing team there, and here they're arguing that we should have more interstellar objects in the outer solar system reach than we do solar system objects. Not only is that a fascinating concept, but one where the observation indicated theory collapses many of the core paradigms of solar system formation theory. Heard that before, hearing it a second time today here from another angle, the timeline, and I'm sure we'll be hearing it again here soon. Speaking of models on the brink, I think the Vera Rubin Observatory is going to put a lot of weight on the shoulders of dusty plasma that wasn't there before. Its low surface brightness capability is perfect, and while it bears the name of the woman who caused plasma cosmology to be ignored in favor of dark matter, it's taking its targeting cues like it's hunting for something else. Folks, there's a new magnetic field model out, and it is relatively solid. It directly mentions the Chaos 7 model, which did capture the Pacific acceleration and Earth's magnetic shift, and it outperforms that model. We spent a good deal of time this past summer wondering if such an acceleration had occurred due to the lightning surges that brought about much larger bolts, record-breaking activity, and other atmospheric phenomena of the electric nature. This is because the lightning is one of the first great key indicators of space energy flux due to magnetic field changes, not only for the practical storm effects, but because a juiced up atmosphere is likely losing ozone. The killer electron name comes from their ability to take out satellites and solar storms, but now it takes on a new meaning, and every aspect of the proton forcing on the ozone that is currently worked into climate models needs to take a jump up to account for the killer electrons too. The layer above our heads made the news a few days ago for having a major breach pattern this spring, where at some point 75% extra UV came in, absolutely related to the ongoing magnetic shift. And that ongoing shift, what happened before, what's happening now and what to expect next, from the earth, the sun, the planets, the people, the stars, the atmosphere, the crust, and the oceans. It's been a nice 12,000 year age of earth. Luckily, there will be a next one. 
for the lucky and the prepared. Pre-order the book or snag our Solar Terrestrial Physics textbook describing the more detailed solar atmospheric interactions. That's at otf.cells.com. And we greatly appreciate all of your support and you're hitting the like button. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.